vertex form word problem. So um, the vertex form is really the best quadratic equation to use for anything that has to do with projectiles. So projectiles being things that are being fired from the ground, whether it's uh, fireworks being set off from the ground or you shoot a bow and or you shoot an arrow with your bow. <laughs> you shoot a bow, and, a bow and arrow or you throw something off um, the roof of your building and it lands on the ground. And So because when it's in vertex form, you can find a maximum height and know a certain point in time when that happens. So when you have to do a, a word problem that involves finding the vertex of the parabola, you want to be able to get your equation into vertex form. And that's what we're going to be looking at in the next lesson, which is called completing the square. So today, though, we're just going to look at the word problems themselves, a couple of different ones that you will be surprised at how easy they are and, and how ready you are to do something once you know what a vertex form is. So this question says the height of a baseball after being hit is given by the following equation and they give you an equation where h is in meters and t is in seconds. So before you even begin, can you tell me what the vertex is? So you know the vertex is h and k and it's the opposite sign of this. So the vertex is going to be my, uh, sorry, I just after I told you that, 2.5 and 38.5, right? 2.5, so the opposite sign, and this one. So there's H and K. So this one here, this 2.5, this has to do with time. So this is time, and this is going to be the height. So if you had a, um, a drawing of this, you would have the ball, the baseball being hit at some height, it's not hit from the ground, but at some height it's going to go up like this and it's going to come back down. And this is 2.5 seconds, this is your time, and this is the height of your ball, and the vertex is 2.5 and 38.5. And I wrote 28. Okay, so here we go. This is going to be 38.5. There we go. Okay, so it says, what is the maximum height of the ball? Well, you know what the maximum height is. The maximum height is 38.5, 38.5 meters. When does this happen? At 2.5 seconds. You already got two marks. Showed some understanding of what a vertex is. It's a maximum. You should also note that the, the quadratic here, the vertex form here is negative, which makes sense. The ball doesn't go, it's not concave up. It's a concave down shape. So it goes up, it hits maximum height, and it comes back down. So projectiles generally go up and then come down, right? You use gravity. What was the height of the ball when it was hit? Okay, so when it was hit, if you look at my graph here, this little picture I drew of it, this is, um, here's your baseball guy standing here with a bat, and he swings the bat, and it's not from the ground. Like sometimes things are from the ground. I think the next example, when we do a soccer example, you kick the ball from the ground. Well, sometimes you kick it in the air if you're really good, but this is being hit from a certain height above the ground, and that happens to happen at times zero, right? times zero. So the height of the ball, the ball is hit at, the ball is hit at time zero. So I want to know what is the height of the ball when t is zero. So that's really easy for me to solve. I'm just gonna plug in zero for time. I'm going to square it and I'm going to add 38.5 to it. And um, I don't think I did that anywhere, so we'll do it quickly on the calculator here for you. So we have um, 2.5, doesn't matter if it's negative because I'm squaring it anyway, and I'm going to multiply that times, times minus six, and I get this number, and I'm going to add 
38.5 and I get one. Okay, so the ball was hit from one meter. That makes sense. Always check to see if your, your solution makes sense. If it said it was hit from, you know, four meters, you know, your baseball player was not jumping in the air. Okay, so the ball was hit. The ball was hit. You should do a nice concluding statement from a height of one meter. Put your units in for your solution. What was the height of the ball after one second? Well, one second means, that means that t was one, and I just have to go back to the equation and put in a one here and solve for the height. Okay, so h is going to be equal to minus six, one minus 2.5 squared plus 38.5. Again, we'll get a calculator to do this one. So we have um, 1 minus 2.5, and we're going to square that. That gives us 2.25 times negative 6, and we're going to add 38.5 to that, and we get 25. So after one second, after one second, the ball went very quickly, the ball had a height of, can't write fast enough, 25 meters. Okay, so let's look at this little diagram that I drew here. So this was 38.5. So let's say one was about here. So that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? That looks like it could be about 25 meters there. Okay, so obviously these are not very difficult questions. The trick here is that you understand where the vertex is and that you can plug in a value for t, for time. And, um, oh, I think there was one more question to, to go along with this one. It says, approximately how long before the ball hits the ground? Okay, so let's look back at the diagram here. So we see that the ball was hit. It was hit a little bit. This is... This would be the ground here. So this is negative time. So we don't have negative time. So the ball was hit from here. But this distance from here to here is approximately the same like from the x-axis. So it's, it's about another two and a half seconds later. So the question said approximately. So you would say about five seconds later. Because you're halfway across here. You're actually a little less than halfway. I understand that, what you're saying, because you're saying, no, it's not perfectly two and a half seconds. It's not going to be an exactly two and a half seconds because the ball was hit from a height here. So we need to actually move it a little bit. So if you are really keen on solving for the exact time, let's go back here, we can say when else would the height be zero? So if I set the equation equal to zero, zero equals minus six, and we had t minus 2.5 squared plus 38.5. If I wanna solve for t, you can do that, right? You can, you can figure that out. I bring the 38.5 to the other side, so I'd have minus 38.5, and then in the same line here, I'm going to divide by minus six, and that's going to give me t minus 2.5 squared. So what's 38.5 divided by 6? I'm getting 6.42, let's say. So 6.42 is equal to t minus 2.5 squared. Okay, so now to get rid of this square here, I'm going to take the square root of each side of the equation. So I'm going to second square root my answer. That's going to give me 2.53 equals t minus 2.5. And then I'm going to bring 2.5 over here, and you'll see I'm going to get t equals 5.03. 
Okay, so it was a little bit more than five seconds, but the question asked approximately, so they weren't really expecting you to do all this work, but later on in quadratics, you may need to do something a little bit more complicated like that. Okay, so for a second word problem, I found this one that says, the path of a soccer ball is modeled by the relation blah blah blah, where D is the horizontal distance in meters after it was kicked, and H is the height in meters above the ground. Sketch the path of the ball. Okay, so let's get a ruler out here to make it kind of pretty. Actually, I think I'm going to just put it up here just in case I run out of room with my writing. Okay, so let's sketch a path of the ball. It says um, the ball was kicked. So you can't kick the ball before. The distance can't be negative. So this is my distance here, and this is going to be my height. Better make this a little bit higher. So looking at this equation here, I can see that the vertex is going to be 28 and 49. So let's go 10, 20, 30, 40. So 20, 10, 20, 28 would be about here. This is less than 30. And it's going to go up to, and we'll make this our height of 49. Because that's as high as it's going to go. Oops, not very straight. Okay, so here's my highest point. So it's kicked from the ground. And it's going to go up like this. And then it's going to come down over here in a nice symmetric. Now remember that the H H value of my vertex, which is 28, is also the equation of the axis of symmetry. Right? D equals 28. That's my axis of symmetry. We should be mentioning that along the way here so that you'll it'll start sticking. Okay, so we sketched it. What is the maximum height of the ball? So this was our A. B, the height of the ball? 49, right? That's why we call it a vertex. These are a maximum Oops, maximum height. So maximum height is 49. 49 and it's meters. And the other question says, what is the horizontal distance when that occurs? And that would be 28 meters. So the ball is going this way and it has a height. So it has a horizontal distance and a vertical distance. So this is your D here and this is your H. Horizontal distance, height. Okay, so we have 49 and 28. Um, when does it have, what is the height at a horizontal distance of 20 meters? Okay, so the height, we're given a height equation, so all I have to do is plug in a height of 20, uh, sorry, a horizontal distance of 20, so I'm going to put 20 in for D, and add 49, and that's going to be, well, that's negative 8. 8 squared is 64. So minus 116 times 64 plus 49. 16 goes into 64 four times. That's minus 4 plus 49 is 45. So it has a height of 45 meters when it's gone 20 meters horizontally. Now, it says find another horizontal distance when h is 20. Okay, so let's take a look back at the diagram here. So when I'm at 20, that's right here, I'm gonna get a colored pencil here. So this is 20 here. So if I go up here, this is what we calculated. We calculated this height and it was 45. And it wants to know where is another place where the horizontal distance now, what is the other horizontal distance when the height is 20? So I want to know, I've got this one, and you can see that because the ball goes up and then it comes back down, that it is going to hit this height again over here, right? And because these are at the same height, so this is 20 and 45, and this is going to be something else and 45. So the question is, what is this something else right here? How far is it from here to here? Okay, so we can do this. We have the technology. 
because we know it's 20, we know parabolas are symmetrical. So that means that the distance from here to the axis of symmetry must be the same. Remember we did that little exercise when you had the same height, you could find the axis of symmetry would be right in between. But we know the axis of symmetry is 28. So 28 minus 20, that means there's eight units between here and here. So if I just add eight more on this side, so add eight to 28, so I'm gonna do 28 plus eight. That means at 36, this is gonna be 36. At a distance of 36, we have the same height of 45. And you'll get lots of word problems that have that because because the um, parabolas are symmetrical, you will be able to figure out, you know, this point. If you had this one, how do you find this one? Well, again, it's just the distance from to the axis symmetry, add it to the other side, right? Math is beautiful. Okay, so that's a couple of word problems for you. And hope that helps straighten up some of the, um, the work that you need to do. It's just a matter of just thinking it through carefully. You understand what the vertex form is. You know where to ver how to find a vertex now. And you know how to plug in values to find different heights at certain times. And so I think you'll find these kinds of questions are, are not, not too difficult for you. You can do it. And I have faith in you. So please subscribe and tell all your friends to come and watch some math on my YouTube channel and um, they'll be smarter for it. Bye for now.